Hello guys, so we are now at London Technic and we are with you on the Twitter Vaco founder of Coins Telegram and our guest uh, Mayun Che, uh, who is co-founder and CEO of uh, Fetch.ai and uh, they are building the network, uh, decentralized network for AI agents and uh, well, uh, Mayun was one of the founding investors of uh, DeepMind, which was bought uh, by Google uh, in 2013. Uh, so great to have you here. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. So can you tell us about your background and how did you generally get involved into AI and machine learning? Yeah, we. Um, I I've been in AI for roughly 20 years. Um, uh, my background was from gaming, and then I got involved in uh, building agents for the games and attaching AI to that. And then we actually met. I met Demis, and we looked at building. The artificial general intelligence engine, and um, then then we started uh, Google DeepMind, where I was an investor. We exited in 2013, and then I think I looked at the market for commercializing AI, and we, you know, 20 roughly 2019, we started uh, the Fetch AI, uh, which was building uh, agent-based infrastructure. Uh, so can you tell us the story about Fetch AI, and how did you generally first discover blockchain technology and crypto? Uh, it, roughly around 2013, 2014, we started looking at it. The, when I came out of Google DeepMind, it was quite interesting is that the application for AI was quite limited. There was no way to actually um, make AI accessible to uh, any, any individual or small companies. It was a game of bigger players who were um, mostly have a lot of data and a lot of compute, and that became very apparent. Um, why? That's why one of the reasons why we exited uh, DeepMind into Google. Uh, so, so what I started, the, the intention was to actually uh, make AI very granular and make it accessible by everybody. And so, how you can interact with it, you can build on it, you can build with it, and you can actually deploy solutions. Now, when we started looking at that, it also became very clear that a um, distributed, decentralized network is what was needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, to look for those solutions, we started looking into um, decentralized ledger technology. And that's how we got into the decentralized ledger technology. And uh, you built as well your own uh, blockchain, which uh, uh, AI on Cosmos Network. So why did you see uh, the need of building your own decentralized network. Yeah, so if you look, if you rewind back five years, and most of the blockchain network was just Ethereum, really. There wasn't any uh, specific blockchain which fulfilled our requirement to run a decentralized agent-based kind of network. Uh, we looked at building, not, not just on Cosmos, we looked at building completely our own consensus model and our own chain which was looking at useful proof of work. Um, but we realized actually that um, unless we need billions and billions of transactions and need to be really, really fast, which we do once we have a whole population of agents transacting with each other, up to that point, we didn't really need to do that. So Cosmos provided a very good uh, alternative, which was easier to deploy and quicker and faster, and we could actually build on it straight away to build the infrastructure for agents. So we took that as, uh, let's let's deploy on it now till it fulfills the requirement because building a layer one network was not our core business. Uh, we actually wanted to build uh, the agentic network that we were after. Mm -hmm. So we took that as, um, as a go-to place initially because it had this ecosystem where you have other projects running, you could easily do interchain communication, you could do conversion. So we chose Cosmos for that reason, and there was plenty of SDKs and developer help available. And as well, I guess when you just started the company, there was not that much activity in the crypto and AI uh, intersection. And the real popularity to AI came with the introduction and release of chat GPT. So can you tell about the involvement of the usage from your network? Yeah, so we, we always saw that this is coming, and uh, it's not news to me that this is here now. Mm -hmm. um, our obviously the activity on our network and the the people who are interacting with the agents has 
you know, gone up exponentially. Um, because people are trying to now think of this new paradigm of software development that is coming. One of the biggest problems with crypto in my mind is, well, actually there are two. One is the way you interact with crypto, i.e. the DLT technology is quite cumbersome and automation helps that incredibly well. Mm -hmm. We have so many chain, interchain communication, interchain transactions, it makes it very easy with the agentic network. So we're seeing quite a increase in usage there. We're also looking at uh, doing uh, decentralized exchanges, i.e. peer-to-peer exchanges, mm -hmm. without a central um, smart contract which controls the liquidity. So uh, we have seen a lot of uptake on that. We have built a project called Metalex on that. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, token trading which could happen that way. But what, what is really quite interesting, this, which is the second problem which crypto has, is the adoption uh, which is not just token related. Uh, something which is not just trading tokens, creating financial instruments around tokens. So what we're trying to do is bring real world use cases and we are actually deploying agents uh, without telling anybody what it's to do with crypto or decentralized ledger technology, but just making sure that the use case actually works. And when the use case works, and then you deploy it on, on chain, what, what really it does is bring this new wave of users to decentralized ledger technology. So, and that's what it needs. It needs use cases which are not just DeFi use cases. Mm -hmm. And what are the most interesting use cases for you, and where do you see the biggest adoption of AI? The, one of the most interesting use cases is really, um, and, and it fits perfectly well with the DLT technology and the whole concept of decentralization, is the gig economy, where individuals are in control of their own destiny. They can actually deploy the agent, they can actually find work, they can actually look for work, they can actually connect to people who can supply them work. So giving people that ability without having an aggregator in the middle is really quite powerful. And I think that really hits the note on the premise of decentralization, which is you know enabling um, individuals to be in control of their own income, in control of their own finances. So that's um, that's a very interesting thing, which I think uh, we're seeing quite a lot of uptake, but also what is interesting is for anywhere where you have these um, aggregators which sit in the middle mm -hmm. and they take um, they take a cut from uh, connecting the buyers to the suppliers, uh, if you can build a solution, an alternative solution, which is as good as the centralized solution, then you can actually bring in a lot of traction to this space. And that's really what our target is, and I think that's where we're going to see some traction. Um, what current traction do you have? Uh, like, what is your user base, etc.? We we roughly have, um, I would say, probably around three to four million agents running at the moment. We mm -hmm. have a lot of developers. We have roughly fifteen to twenty thousand developers building on uh, Fetch AI. Um, they're, they're ex at this point, it's very exploratory because they're trying mm -hmm. to explore how these agents can solve problems. We also have. Uh, plenty of tech entrepreneurs uh, who want to build um, business cases, you know, using not, we're not very overly enthused just about technology, but also want to build a commercial use case. So we have roughly, you know, seven to eight thousand of those, which means they are they're looking to build solutions on this framework and on the Fetch network, uh, which actually unlocks financial value. And you have as well your first uh, corporate partner, uh, Deutsche Telekom. So uh, are they, uh, they uh, your validator or is this partnership uh, means quite more? We, we have a partnership with uh, Bosch. We have a foundation where we have other partners. They don't just um, do the validation uh, validator as on the network. They are also building solutions which use agent network. Uh, which use agent technology, fetches agent technology, and the connectivity which it brings to the agent. So they 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 are actually actively engaged in building solutions. Yeah, this sounds interesting. Are there any other partnerships in pipeline? Uh, we we my my the I I kind of raised this issue quite a lot. 
if you're looking at just these big corporations, then it's not in their interest to do this because really thinking about it, you're bringing this a whole agents and all this space should open it up for individuals and small and medium enterprise. Mm -hmm. So that's our target market. We're not after big corporates to join any of this. Mm -hmm. Although there are some outward looking um, companies like Bosch who, who accept and understand what's coming and they want to be part of it. The, the bigger problem with bigger corporates is generally that they don't change that quickly mm -hmm. and we need change to come now. So we, we're not actively looking for any big partnerships. We're looking for uh, developers, techpreneurs, individuals, small businesses to come on board. Uh, and as well, how do you differ from uh, other different similar crypto and AI projects? Uh, there, well, I mean, there's not that many. That's the first thing uh, uh, we don't now, have. Now you are talking, for example, you're talking with uh, Singularity and Ocean Protocol, and basically Singularity as well has a marketplace for AI agents. So how mm -hmm. is it yeah, so, so that's 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 not uh, overly. That's not a, specifically technically. That's not correct. What we are doing is we're building this partnership alliance with all all of those two mm -hmm. other projects. And the reason why we're building is because our technologies are very complementary. So when when we say agents, agents can be used in different ways in different kind of um, scenarios. So so Ocean brings the data layer. So how do you take data? How do you make sure it's decentralized, it's secure, and how do you feed it to the machine learning models? So that's Ocean's skill set. That's not our skill set. Mm -hmm. um, then on top of that, you have Singularity. Singularity skill set is more research oriented, where they're building um, machine learning models, AI models, which which will have agents within them. Mm -hmm. But that's that's not the agent network that uh, Fetch is building. So so layer on top of the data, you put in uh, all the machine learning models, the innovation in these machine learning models, and uh, that's what Singularity brings. And on top of all of that sits Fetch, which is the application layer. Mm -hmm. So what agents in our case mean, it, they are a tool for application building. And these applications are uh, built dynamically. So you provide them the objective, and the objective goes down and gets interpreted, perhaps using uh, Singularity Net's model, multiple models. Mm -hmm. Then you actually deliver the execution of that um, objective through the agent network. So actually there are complementary technologies and that's why we are deciding as a um, artificial super intelligence alliance to put all these complementary technologies in the tech stack which actually makes it much more convenient for developers to kind of build. And who was the initiator of uh, this partnership and so uh, like? Well I mean I started the conversation but obviously all the projects were also um, kind of very receptive of such an idea. And then actually, as we started opening the conversation, became very clear from all the parties and the participation from all the, pro the both projects, all three of our projects, that uh, you know that was really the right way to do. And I think the, the space needs to mature and the mergers have to happen because you know how many tokens can you actually have in this space? Um, and they come and go. So we wanted to put this technology in a meaningful way so that actually you can build a fully vertically integrated tech stack, mm -hmm. which you can run with one token, one utility token, and you can actually deliver um, more value to the token holders. You can deliver more value to the uh, to the de developers, and you can kind of deliver more value to the application layer and building the people who build the application. And how soon will this merge happen? And as well, what will it mean uh, for the users? What will change for the users? Yeah, so so it's 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 a process, right? So nobody's done it before uh, in the way we're doing it. It's it has multiple stakeholders involved in it, and it takes a lot of time to get everybody aligned on something. Uh, we um, we are as as you probably heard from the announcement. The, the merge is starting to happen. The tokens are going to get converted into ASI token. And that, that will might continue to give people, the token holders, the time to convert. Mm -hmm. So it might, it might carry on for another you know, 12 months, so six months, 12 months, whatever, whenever we feel the community has converted the tokens. And then 
in, in the meanwhile, you can always start building on the tech stack, which we're going to be releasing over the next few months. So there will be still for some time, like your old token transition into circulation, and then there will be token too? No sure. Token. There, there will be tokens in circulation for infinity, of course, because some people might not convert them, but we will provide them um, the bridges, the, the tools to do it. The exchanges, on the other hand, might just do one swap from uh, AGIX, Ocean, or ANFET tokens mm -hmm. into the ASI token. And that, that would be the easiest way to do it. Mm -hmm. So you put uh, the, uh, all your tokens into, um, into the exchange, and then they get converted. Ultimately, all the, uh, the three tokens will get delisted, and the only token that will exist will be the ASI token. And is all in your opinion, and when will we see AGI? Well, that's a billion dollar or multi-billion dollar question, but um, I don't think it's that far. Um, I mean, I think everybody is now starting to see that. I would say probably AGI is, uh, I mean, we, it depends on the definition of AGI. We're passing quite a lot of the AGI tests, mm -hmm. but maybe those tests were not representative of what AGI needs to do. But if you look at just, if you standardize those tests as AGI tests, and if you said that if you pass all those tests and AGI is here, then I would say in the next three to five years. Okay, so pretty soon. Pretty okay. soon, indeed. And for example, like Jan de Kuhn says uh, that uh, he doesn't believe in uh, human level intelligence, that uh, we haven't reached even like cat intelligence. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? Like, should we call AGI like uh, really like human level intelligence? So it's just like, will I, be just much more capable. I, I would, AI. I would agree uh, quite strongly with, you know, him in the sense that, and, and that's what I, my kind of precursor to this conversation was, if you think those tests are valid as human level intelligence, then mm -hmm. yes, then we will have that. But I, I agree that it's not a human level intelligence. It's not very sentient intelligence. That might, I don't know. I can't give you my opinion even. I don't know when this will be. But if, you, if you're looking at just those tests that mm -hmm. we have set up or set out for AGI, it will start passing all those tests very soon. And uh, yeah, is it is it is it human level? Is it sentient? That uh, I have a question mark too. And as well, in terms of the users, uh, people still mostly use uh, traditional websites. As well, like you know, one of your use cases is for the travel, like booking hotels or finding tickets. Uh, people still use traditional websites. When do you think that it will be the real switch for the majority of the users? to use those AI agents instead? I think that's going to be very soon um, because once the applications are available, which are accessible, that will change. The websites will change into agents. Mm -hmm. So that's that's coming very quickly. We are launching, uh, we're launching a campaign to onboard all uh, small, medium enterprise businesses. Uh, all you need is, if you have a website, you can, you can very quickly with a few clicks, launch your AI agent, which can actually interact with your website. It can actually carry out all the functionality, so the user can actually uh, ask the agent, you know, whatever it needs, and it will provide you. So you wouldn't have to go through the website. So, so the paradigm shift between uh, websites and into agents is coming very, very quickly. Uh, you'll see a huge uptake within the next year. And can you share as well some of your upcoming plans for the fight with AI? Well, at the moment, we're focusing on this merger, as you know, and we're putting all this technology stack together. Uh, we, I mean, our developers are hard at work. The teams are collaborating and building these solutions. Uh, so we will be launching very soon some uh, integrations with, between all the projects. Uh, you'll see that in the very near future. But ultimately, we what we are aiming to get to is, um, as you said, a more AGI-level intelligence, but going beyond that by making tools which enable, enable businesses, which enable uh, different stakeholders mm -hmm. to actually launch uh, more intelligence specific to their business and put it on this network where everybody can interact with. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, we, we're expecting that over the next two, three years, uh, we will be the market leader in providing those tools. Okay, we'll look for some more updates uh, from you. Thank you for such interesting conversation. Thank you. Appreciate it.